So let's take a step back for a moment and think about what we're doing and why. Our goal is to come up with a definition of dimension that applies to objects that are not perfectly symmetric, that are not perfectly self-similar, something more flexible than the self-similarity dimension. And recall also that the reason we want to do this is that they're objects for which it's clear that thinking of them as one or two dimensional don't make sense. So I began this unit by thinking about the Koch curve again and said, if we have a Koch curve, its length is infinite. So uh, if we view it as a one dimensional object, we're always going to have an infinite length. If we view it as a two dimensional object, it always has zero area. And that doesn't really seem satisfying, either of those. We'd like some other way to characterize or quantify uh, this structure. So that led us to um, seek some other sort of dimension. So in the previous videos in this unit, I did a bunch of box counting. And I hope that this seemed, um, well, not I hope, what should I say? Um, my suspicion is uh, that this seemed a little bit tedious and maybe not tremendously deep. And if that's how you're feeling right now, that's good, because to be honest, that's sort of what I think the box counting dimension is. It's certainly useful and very commonly used. And it's a little bit deep, but not super deep. And it's a little bit tedious to sort of think about how it's constructed. So that's where things stand. So thus far, we've looked at the box counting dimension for regular shapes and shapes where uh, the boxes, I made them line up just right with the shape. But we want something that's more flexible that we can use in messier, more experimental cases. And so that's what we're going to do in the next couple of units. We're going to talk about um, how to uh, come up with a procedure for estimating the box counting dimension for irregular fractals where there isn't perfect symmetry and in situations where the data and resolution is limited. So as usual, we'll get started with a few examples. So let's apply box counting to a circle and see what happens. And I'm actually going to side by side do a square and a circle to contrast the two situations. And I wrote over here this equation uh, for the box counting dimension. And n of s is c1 over s to the d. So c is some constant, something that doesn't depend on s. s is the side of the box, and n of s is the number of boxes we need to cover the shape. So. Let's say that um, this side is 1, so we have a 1 by 1 square. So then these smaller squares would have a side of a half. And we can see that for the square, sorry about the glare there, there's 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then for the circle, let me line it up for the circle, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's write this out. So we're going to have s and n of s. So s is a half, n of s is 4, s is a half, n of s is 4. So 2 squared is 4, 2 squared is 4. That's that two-dimensional uh, behavior again. All right, so what would happen if we go down two sizes. So now this is half of a half. So these boxes have a side of an eighth. So I'll just get ready, put that here. All right. So for the square, how many boxes do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 8 is 64. Not a coincidence that I'm taking that number and squaring it. Squaring it, it's two dimensional. So 8, and then this is 64. 8 squared is 64. All right, so let's do the same thing now, but for the circle. So let's see, I'll line it up like this. And this time I'm going to have to count. So let's see. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. So it takes 52 of these smaller boxes to cover this circle. So n of s is 52. So let's write that down. And we can see the problem. 2 squared is 4. 8 squared is 64 because the square is two-dimensional. But the circle is two-dimensional too. Oh, and just to be clear, when I'm referring to the square, I'm referring to the interior as well. I didn't want to color it all in, again, because it's so much marker that it starts to smell. Um, so the square is two-dimensional. The circle is two-dimensional, too. Two squared is four. Right on, that looks good. Eight squared is not 52. So what's going on? Why does this seem to not work? And um, it turns out, as you can probably perhaps have anticipated, that we're not going to see this exact relationship until the um, box size gets smaller still. So what we really want is some measure of the sort of area or size. And we can measure a box very precisely with boxes. There's no leftover. There's no, nothing kind of running over the edge. But if I want to do that for a circle, maybe this is even a better example. Um, here I've got lots of partially filled boxes. So, it, so I guess, it, I mean, the, we, the rule is you want to cover the shape, but this does seem wasteful. I need to use this entire big box just to cover that little portion of the shape. So there's this sort of slop or, or overhang leftovers. But that gets to be less and less of a big deal as my size, as the box size gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So, uh, what this is suggesting is that this equation actually is not always true. It's actually only true as s gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So just to state that again, the key thing is that for the box counting dimension for shapes that aren't pre-selected like a square, the boxes have to be small. So this equation is only true as s gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Mathematically, we would say that it's only in the limit that s approaches 0 that this equation is true. For large s, as we've just seen with the circle, this equation won't be true. So what this means is that in order to calculate the box counting dimension for circles or other sorts of shapes that don't line up with squares exactly, we're going to want to investigate what happens to this as s gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can already see that's going to be a little bit of work because the smaller the boxes are, the more boxes we have to count. But um, nevertheless, we'll forge ahead. And in the next video, we'll do uh, box counting for a circle. And we'll see how one could um, start to work with this constraint that s needs to get smaller and smaller and smaller.